Today, we will discuss about random variables. Let us now define first, what is a variable? According to the book of Danilo de Guzman, in Statistics and Probability book, a variable is any information, attribute, characteristic, number, or quantity that describes a person, place, event, thing, or idea that can be measured or counted. A variable can be qualitative or quantitative. It is either, when we talk about quantitative, it is either discrete or continuous. Now, let us start defining what is a discrete variable. Discrete variable is a quantitative variable whose value can only be attained to counting. It can be finite in number of possible values or countably infinite if the counting process has no end. Examples The number of students in statistics class. Our variable here is the number of students and you have observed that it is countable. We can count the number of students in statistics class. So that's why it is a discrete variable. Second, the number of tails when flipping two coins. You have observed that we can count the possible outcomes if we flip two coins. So still countable. Then it is what we call a discrete variable. Random variable. It is a variable whose value is dependent to the outcome of a well-defined random event or experiment, such as throwing a pair of dice or drawing a card from a standard deck. Let us now start with discussing the discrete random variable. In an experiment, the outcome is said to be discrete random variable if the experiment has only countable or countably infinite number of outcomes. No other outcome exists between two consecutive outcomes. The set of all possible outcomes in an experiment is called the sample space. So the example of a discrete random variable, flipping a coin four times, having three children in the family, throwing a die. You have observed that the possible outcomes of these uh, events are countable. Pwede natin mabilang yung lalabas na outcome nito. Now, let us now discuss the continuous random variable. It is a quantitative variable that can assume an infinite, limani or uncountable number of real number values. The value given to an observation can include values as small as the instrument of measurement allows. In an experiment, the outcome is said to be a continuous random variable if an outcome can take an uncountably infinite number of possible outcomes within a specified real number interval. It is always have an outcome between any two existing ones. For example, uh, any event whose result are the values is, uh, are in between two specific values. For example, height. You have observed the height. The, uh, the possible outcome of a height is always in between two specific integers. For example, the height of the tree, let's say that is uh, 10.5 meters high. So you have observed that there is a decimal point to the outcomes of a continuous variable. Another example, let's say the distance you traveled from school to house. So uh, example of this, we have 13.5 kilometers or 13.75 kilometers or 13.25 kilometers. 
you have observed that the outcomes are in decimal. So there is a point or there are values in between two integers. Another example, we have the distance traveled by a vehicle. The variable here is distance. So that is a continuous variable. The exact age of a person is also a continuous variable because when we talk about the exact age of a person, which is the variable, you have observed that we are talking about the years, months, hours. We have uh, uh, minutes, seconds. So for example, when I say, how old are you? Of course, you will, the exact, when we talk about the exact age, so you, sometimes you also say, I am uh, 30 years and 6 months. Okay, from that example, you can also write that as 30.5 years. So you have observed that the outcome is in decimal form. There is a decimal. And that is what we call a continuous random variable. Now, let us try this. Tell whether each variable is discrete or continuous. Now, I will give you enough time to answer this, or you can pause this uh, video to answer the five okay, statements here. You identify if it is discrete or continuous. And after that, we will check your output. Okay, let us check your output. Number one, time required for a vehicle to cover 20 kilometers. So what is our variable here? The variable is time. And we all know time is continuous variable. Number two, number of airplanes in an airport. So what is our variable here? Very good, the number of airplanes in an airport. And the number of airplanes is discrete because we can count the number of airplanes. This is countable. Now, number three, population of ants inside the cave. The variable is population of ants. And this is discrete because still countable. Number four, head counts of an animal in a zoo. So what is our variable here? Head counts of an animal. And this is discrete variable because we can still count the number of heads of an animal in a zoo. Number five, volume of water. So what is our variable here? Volume. And the volume is very good, that is a continuous because we all know that there's no specific okay, integer, uh, not only specific integer that will define the volume, but also there are values in between these two specific integers that will define the volume of a water. Let's proceed to the possible values of a random variable. These are the values that are obtained from functions that assign a real number to each point of a sample space. You have observed in our previous examples that uh, some events do not give a numeric value to its outcomes. Like for example, flipping a coin, you have observed that we have head or tail and it is not in numeric. At this time, we're going to assign a numerical value to every element in our sample space. So now, let us write the sample space of a basketball team will play for three consecutive games. You have observed that in playing basketball, there are two possible outcomes, and that is win or loss. Now, to find the possible outcomes of the given situation, we will now use a tree diagram. If you can still recall in your junior high school on how to create a tree diagram, it is very useful to determine 
the elements of our sample space. So since the basketball team will play three consecutive games, so we have game one, game two, and game three. If you can still recall that the possible outcomes in playing basketball, we have W stand for win and L stands for loss. Since there are two possible outcomes, we will use two raised to x, where x is a number of games. For example, in game number one, what are the possible outcomes? We have two raised to one, which is equal to two, and that is, or that the outcomes are win or w and loss or l. In the second game, we have two raised to two, which is equal to four. So we have, we will write w, l, w, l. So we have four. In the third game, the possible outcomes, we have two raised to three, which is equal to eight. So we have w, l, w, l, w, l, w, l. And now, to identify the elements of the outcomes in our sample space, the first element is we have w, w, w. So it means that in all games, the team wins. Or w, w, l. So two wins and one loss. Or win or w, l, w. So we have W, L, W, or W, L, L. We have also L, W, W. Or we have also L, W, L. Or we have also L, L, W. And L, 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 or all games, the team lost. So these are the outcomes in playing three games. So the sample space, we have now the elements of our sample space. W, 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 L, W, L, W, W, L, 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 W, W, L, W, L, 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 W, and L, L, L. Now, the sample space, these are, there are eight possible outcomes. If we are interested to the number of wins, so, dito na natin uh, gagawin yung numerical value. We need to identify our random variable since our random variable here is the number of wins. So yung bibilangin lang natin sa bawat element ng sample space natin ay yung number of wins. For example, www. So ilang wins dito? We have 3. So we will now use 3 to represent that in all games the team wins. Then we have WWL. Ilang wins meron dito? We have two. WLW, still two. LWW, still two. Then, WLL, ilang wins meron dito? We have only one. LWL, still one. LLW, still one. And lastly, we have LLL. Ilang wins meron dito? You have observed, in this outcome, hindi nanalo yung team in playing basketball. So, we will now use to, 0 to represent 
no wins. Then the sample space now, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0, it means that there is no win for the team. 1, it means the team wins once. 2, it means that the team wins twice. 3, it means that the team wins twice. Since we already identified the numerical value assigned to the elements of our sample space, okay, since there are eight possible outcomes, so let us now create the probability distribution function. Always remember that the number of outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. We will use this formula. Now, what if we are going to find the probability that the team will never win? So we will use P of 0. 0 represents that the team will not win. So since out of 8 outcomes, there is only one outcome that the team will not win. So we have 1 over 8 or 1 8. Then, P of 1, it means that the number of outcomes that the team will win once. There are 3 out of 8, or 3 eighths. The probability of 2, it means that the team will win twice. The probability, there are 3 outcomes out of 8, so we have 3 eighths. Then, P of 3, it means that the team will win in all games. So, there are only one outcome that the team will win in all games. So, we have 1 out of 8 or 1 8. Then, the probability distribution function is P of X is equal to, you have observed that 1 8 if X is equal to 0, 3 8 if x is equal to 1, 3 8 if x is equal to 2, and 1 8 if x is equal to 3, where x is a number of wins in 3 games. So this is now the probability distribution function. Now, let us now answer these questions. Question number one, what is the probability that a team will win in all games? So, titignan natin yung nasa function natin, yung probability distribution function natin. The probability that the team will win in all games, x is equal to 3, so the answer is 1, 8. Next, what is the probability that a team will win twice in the game? So, titignan natin yung x is equal to 2. Kasi twice daw. In three games, twice lang sila nanalo. So, you have observed that the result, if x is equal to 2, is 3 eighths. Now, number 3. What is the probability that a team will never win in the game? Okay. Ano nga yung x natin dito? Okay. x is equal to 0. Therefore, the value is 1, 8. So, that is now the answers to the questions. Let us try this. Consider tossing a pair of unbiased coins. A. Construct its sample space. B. Assign possible values to the sample points, where x is the number of heads. C. Make a probability distribution function for getting a head. Since there are two coins, so let us start with the first coin. So if you also recall, since uh, tossing a coin, there are two possible outcomes. 
So to raise to one is two. So we have head or tail. For the second coin, so since two raised to two, we will have four outcomes here. So we have head, tail, head, tail. So let us now find the outcomes in choosing a pair of unbiased coins. So the first outcome, we have head and head. Or we have head or tail. Or we have tail or head, tail and tail. So these are the outcomes. So the sample space in choosing a pair of unbiased coins, we have head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. So now, let us now proceed in B. We will now assign possible values to the sample points where X is the number of heads. So in the first outcome, so this is our X. So how many heads do we have in the first outcome? There are two. How about in the second? One. How about in the third? There's only one head. How about in the last outcome? You have observed that there is no head, so we will use, okay, zero. So this is now the assigned values to the sample points. Now, let us now create a probability distribution function for getting a head. The number of outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. So, let us start with the probability of getting two heads. So, since out of four outcomes, there is only one possible outcome that, it, that both coins are head. Then, the probability of one. So, you have observed that in our out outcomes, there are two out of four. Or you can still simplify this, 2 over 4, or 2 fourths, that is equal to 1 half. The probability of getting no head, or P of 0. So since there's only one possible outcome out of 4, so the probability is 1 fourth. So this is, so this is now our answer to the given problem. A, the sample space. B, we have the assigned possible values. And C, for a probability distribution function for getting ahead. Okay, this is the end of our discussion. Thank you for watching.